Ravens. This is Brother Dawood. Yeah. Let me introduce you to Scully. He had an infamous Scully. White suit, afro, the homie was gully. Oh no, yeah, those lyrics is quoted from Calio Papa. The song titled, Welcome to New Orleans. And today, I want to touch on the infamous Sam Scully. Samuel Lee Clay, a.k.a. Sam Scully, was born November 22nd, 1952 in Uptown New Orleans. He comes from a big family that resided on Jackson Avenue, which is a block away from the Calio Housing Projects. As his family increased in size, some of his family members moved in the Calio Projects, which resulted in Sam residency and stay within the complex. You follow? Now, you know that when it comes to having a big family, you know, that means that there had to be some type of funds or resources to sustain human life, you know, you follow. Now, at this time, during the, the younger years of Sam Scully, you know, the job market was really slow. You know, with the job market being low, how would a person survive? What would a person have to do if there's no job to sustain you? You follow? You know, there, there's mouths that had to be fed. And people want the finer things in life. You follow? And what were like the only jobs or the only thing to do as far as a man to go out there and do? What was the, the man's only thing they could result to to make money? The only thing that they could result to to make money was that of uh, stealing or boosting, you know, um, jacket people, taking the risk with gambling. And the main one being that of um, selling drugs. You follow? Now, Skelly started his grind as a runner peddling weed as a means of surviving. You follow? He would do his thing, you know, Make his little money and take care of his family the best way he could. You follow? But you know, when it comes to that world of hustling, there are certain things that come with the territory. You follow? He had a problem with someone who was hating on him and his family and disrespecting him and his family. This problem resulted and Scully tossing the dude he had a problem with off of a roof. And Scully was arrested in dead time for the situation. You follow? At the serving time, he, he chilled a bit, you know, to relearn the game to see which way to go, the do's and don'ts who to trust, and all these different things. So, he went back to hustling again after he learned what was going on and see which way to go because people was established when he was away. But he started rising up in the ranks, slowly but surely. And his competition on his rise was, was that of um, Calvert Broadnax Sticks. Um, who was our Broadnax brother, who were both kingpins at an earlier time before Sam Scully. You follow? They had their time and their reign, and they did their thing. But I'm going to touch on this another time. You follow? He would make 
solid connections to put himself in a good position. Things were smooth selling, so to say. Then things changed. There was a new product on the market. It was called crack cocaine. It was said that Sam Skelly made connections with suppliers of this new product. Then he put together a team and drafted small dealers from certain parts of the city. He became the guy on top of the drug game in New Orleans, some say. He opened up several powder shops throughout the city with a head of each one who managed the influx and the business of those powder shops. And his home base, which was the Calia Project, is where he had his main lieutenants. You follow? Now, there's different stories out there of how he got this name Scully. Some said that the name Scully come from, you know, you know how you look at that poison symbol or the symbol, you know, something that's poison. You had a skull there with the crossbones on it. Some said since he was that man that was pumping that work that that's how he got that name. Some say he got that name from his way with, with the women, you know, um, it's reversed because when I look up the word Skelly, it says something about a woman who trades sex for drugs. But there's different stories of how he got this name. But anyway, Skelly had it going on. He amassed a lot of wealth. He had a flashy wardrobe and jewelry. You know, he was a charmer, and a ladies' man. He was good to the people in the um, hood. He would, encourage, he would encourage the kids to go to school, stay in school, you know, um, to become something, make something of themselves. And he would tell them, don't be like him. You know, he used to buy the, the kids school supplies and school clothes, you know, pay people rent, you know, took care of anybody that that needed the help. You know, and it was said that Sam had a fleet of cars. It was said that he had cars scattered throughout the city. And they said that what he would do, he would get in one car, right? They said he'd drive, say like to the projects. He'd get out the car in the projects, walk through one of the project cuts, hop, in another car and drive off somewhere. You know, people will be saying, yo, what, what, what's Skelly at? They'll say that, you know, Skelly, he's, he's in the hood. He's, he's around here. They wouldn't know where he'd exactly be at because they'll still be thinking that he's actually in the projects in somebody's house. But he'd been on went to another part of the city. And he had cars throughout the whole city. You know, his whole thing was to throw people off so they don't have a more scope. You follow? You know, it was said that he had, like, the nicest cars, like, like the space age or futuristic cars that other people didn't even have in the city. He had it. You follow? And, um, he was generous to the people, you know. He treated everyone in sight when he was in the projects. Anybody that was there, he treated them. It was said that if he sent the person to the store with a $100 bill to get him a soda, that... He just only wanted soda, and he'd tell a person who went to the store with him, for him, with that dollar bill, to keep the change. You follow? So now things going smooth, then the challenges arrive. Some of the underlings of Sam felt that they wanted to break off and start their own thing. One of them being that of Glimettes. Sam... And Glenn was at odds with each other. The whole Calio was unified at one point. But over time, the Calio became divided. Now, Sam was the one that put the whole project on and mad people on from the jump. You follow? And over time, 
when when the big money started coming in during this crack cocaine era, this when the division and the eyebrows started riding up. Like, hey, I want I want in on the bigger piece. I don't want to be under you no more. I want my own thing. You know, Sam was from or the front of the front of town part of the Calio because the Calio is like this. You got the front of town and the front of town and the back of town. Galvez was the street that separated the front of town from the back of town. But from the front of town and the back of town, there's an old side and new side. But the old side and new side is also um, divided through um, a street called Erata Street. But Glen Metz was a resident of Back of Town, the Back of Town part of um, the Calio. And Glen wanted to take over. He wanted, he didn't want to be, he wanted to just take over everything anyway. You follow? So there was an exchange of words. So it was said that they said, all right, well, the front is y'all dang. The front of town is y'all dang. We're going to run our own dang from the back of town. And this was when the split occurred. Now, Glenn Metz started his program in 1985. You know, he was doing his thing as a weed dealer, some say, for years before, you know, this whole crack cocaine ever came in. You know, he was rolling with Sam. But he started competing with Sam. You know, things was running smooth for a bit. You know, now, let's go a little forward. You know, so things really started getting out of hand. On June 11th, 1987, Sam Scully was killed. He was 34 years old. He was shot in the hallway of the Calio Projects at 4 a.m. in the morning on Martin Luther King Boulevard. It was rumored that he was murdered by a person by the name of Gennaro Meatball Arthur. Meatball Arthur, or Meatball that a lot of people know him as, was considered, or some say was, an enforcer for Glenn Metz. They said that he put in work for Glenn. This is what people saying. You know, this is some of the rumors and stuff. You follow? So they saying that he was an enforcer and that this was a hit put out on Sam. Some say. Some say different. Some say that Meatball wasn't the one that did it. Some say he was. You follow? But Meatball was close to the Clay family. It was said that Sam helped out Meatball in the past with some legal issues that he had. It was said that of Sam that he had connections with the courthouses. He had connections with the politicians, law enforcement, law enforcement, and with hitmen. This tragic event caused the war within the complex between the back of town and the front of town. This event, you know, it resulted in numerous men to early graves and dozens of prison. His death sparked a drug war that lasted for over 20-something years. You follow? People idolized Sam Skelly. He was that dude. He was a template. He was a flasher. He was a baller. He was all these things. And a lot of people wanted the pattern they self after him. They formed their organizations around his template and his foundation that he laid down. He had influenced numerous people. His funeral was that of a celebrity. People from every hood in New Orleans came to pay respect to Sam Scully. His lifestyle impacted and influenced 
New Orleans hip hop artists such as Master P, Soldier Slim, Crazy, Lyric, C Murder, Calio Bar, Calio Papa, Calio Mooch, and Shay Skelly, whom all reference Sam Skelly and their music. You follow? Darth Speed.